back one year ago, the start of the coronavirus lockdown. Alright, so I just left Japan, left my girlfriend, the lockdown has started, I can't see my friends, I won't be able to do anything for a year and more. Mm, I need a new hobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, hey, they've made a new website, let's go and check it out. No way. Okay. Nice frickin' map. This map looks pretty cool. Huh. The place we did see though was in Toigawa Station. It's got a train museum. We've been on a plane, a boat, a bus, and now a car. We're finally here in Matasaka City, in Mie Prefecture, about to try Matasaka beef, the most expensive beef in Japan. Yeah! It hasn't been photoshopped, it genuinely is that ridiculous. Look at it. The first time you gaze upon the Kintai Bridge, you can't help but think somebody got a little bit carried away with their credit card. Oh, cool. Yeah, this is pretty freaking dope. I like this. Cassandra. Hey, Nico. How can I help you today? Um... Please launch a new project file. Sure thing. What is the project's name? Project... Odyssey. I guess this is an artificial intelligence project? Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely AI. Awesome. Final question. How high do you see the chances of the project being successful? I reckon 25%. Only 25%? Are you sure that the project is still worth doing then? Yes. All right then. I guess let the project Odyssey begin. Yes, you are absolutely seeing right. This is an artificially intelligence powered guide map of every, well, pretty much every J vlogger out there. Yeah, and I'm probably the one who is the most surprised at how well it ended up working. Anyways, um, I'm Nico, aka The Red Value, and I made this. And today, right now, I want to go through you how this thing works, why it works, and why it's awesome. Well, the first to catch you up to speed. Um, I'm Nico. I was an exchange student in Japan at Nagoya University. Yeah, I spent half a year there, and that was honestly the best time of my life. I'm not kidding. It was really awesome. I mean, what do we expect? It's Japan, right? One of the most awesome things that happened over there is I met my girlfriend, Tatsui. We really fell in love over time and we basically ended up meeting each other again. I went back to Japan twice for a month each, once in summer of 2019 and another time in, 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 in uh, the, the, the Easter holidays afterwards and that was in fact my last time there. 
like literally I managed to get there just before the corona crisis hit so after I went back to Europe um, it was locked down and I knew at that point that I'm not gonna see my girlfriend for more than a year after that which is definitely which was definitely difficult and still is difficult now thankfully I wasn't completely lonely during this time of lockdown um, I had Cassandra there with me thank you Cassandra ha 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 Nico you have no friends <laughs> oh god, she is so mean. Okay, never mind. So let's start with a small walkthrough through all the features of the map. Righty then. Righty, righty, righty. Here you can see the entire map and one of the first features you'll see is that it shows Japan in its whole glory and beauty. And then it also shows my videos. Those are on per default. All of my whole adventure in Japan, and um, yeah, this is this is cool, sh cool shit. Most of my videos were determined by AI where the position was, but uh, some of the stuff I put in manually. That's also an ability that I made sure that I'm able to do, that I can just change things around if they don't fit my agenda. So my videos are on by default, and you see here Cluster Nagoya, where I was, student exchange, yada yada yada, Higashiyama Dom. There you go, where I slept. This is this is a map, and each time you click on something, you can click and you'll get a link to the video. Like, right here. Yeah, you can see this video that I did here, which is pretty damn cool. Yeah, that, that was a fun time. Um, and each one is basically a link, provides you a link to the video, and sometimes there is multiple videos per location, in which case you can scroll through them. Yeah! How about we go to the feature that is really cool, and that is the fact that I am able to map every single J vlogger. Oh, Dave. There we go. Kumamoto, Kagoshima. That's where one of his videos was. Fukuoka. This one here, for example. Um, Matsusaka. That was that one's good. I love that one. But as you can see, it has literally every single J vlogger. Masan Hanahashi, another cool dude. You can see here he lives in Tokyo. As you can see, all of his stuff is cluttered around Tokyo. And Nakameguro, Maguro River, and all of this is determined using artificial intelligence. All right, so basically you can click here, you can find JVloggers as much as you like, go to Shuke, and you'll see his videos, which are more spread out. He goes to the countryside a bit more. And that we can do now with this map. We can now see the kind of patterns each kind of JVlogger does. And it's got everything, basically. Walking channels, um, hiking channels, for example, Kyushu Trail, all in Kyushu, which is pretty freaking cool. Whoever is around, um, you can you can click on. And if if they're not, let me know. It's not hard for me to add a new one. So it's literally fully automatic. So yeah, another feature you can basically swap between the styles. Here is a satellite style. This is one that I really like. Um, that you're able to switch the styles and literally see exactly where things are going on. For example, here Mount Fuji, you can directly see that this is indeed Mount Fuji. Um, a lot of different kinds of map themes. Some of them are more in give more information. Other uh, others are more stylistic, and others look cooler. And that's what you can do. All right. And the last feature that I want to show you today. One thing that I basically got quite lucky with is that the tools that I used automatically basically gave me Wikipedia links. You see here, if I click on this here, Hasagi's video, Hakone, it literally gives you a link to the Wikipedia page, and that is basically, I actually, that was more luck than skill. Uh, yeah, sometimes you get lucky. It's really freaking cool that this works. So basically, every single JVlogger is mapped abroad in Japan, Charmedian, um, other dudes, Rambalak, Rachel June, um, whoever to your hands content. And oh yeah, whenever you select a JVlogger, you can basically get a link to that exact map um, basically for free. So if I refresh this here in the browser, you can see that Rachel and June were already selected and now selected again. So share the map with your friends. For example. All right. You did a good job, Cassandra, here. Thank you, Nico, but I already know that. Because after all, I am genuinely amazing. Uh, next thing. So how does this thing really work? Okay, the reason why I got the idea for this in the first place was because I noticed that for many travel channels, people tend to say where they go. 
Kintai Bridge. Kintoigawa Station, Matasaka City in Mie Prefecture. And that's basically what I exactly use. With my job and my university degree, I focus on artificial intelligence. And that is where I was aware of something called NLP, or Natural Language Processing. NLP, Natural Language Processing, contains a lot of different tools, and one of these tools is entity extraction. You can teach an artificial intelligence to learn and to discover whenever a location is mentioned. And this is exactly the trick here. I use an AI to specifically detect locations. And then after I use that location, I'm basically able to geocode it. Yeah, there is something called geocoding, and I uh, learned about it back when I, with a friend of mine, we did a breakfast delivery startup. And back in the day, we kind of um, did use geocoding to determine whether someone's address is within a certain boundary. And if it's outside of the boundary, we basically didn't deliver. We said, sorry, too far away. We used geocoding for that, and that worked really, really well. And because I knew that you could extract locations from text, and then apply geocoding on them, it would be possible to obtain coordinates out of a passage of text. If someone says something, the AI is able to listen in, to hear that someone is mentioning a location, and then create a coordinate. And that is exactly what this map does. This map is just a library of videos and their respective coordinates. All right, simple enough. Well, yes and no. To productionize something like this, to make sure that it's able to auto-update and have a proper infrastructure behind it that is able to scale, you need to um, you need to build that. That is a kind of that was a massive software project. In the end, it took me a year. Oh, it also took me a year because I really didn't know at the start that this thing is going to work. It's possible that geocoding fails, and there there are there are enough examples in the map from other YouTubers where it did fail. Uh, of course, the entity analysis could fail. For example, the AI. I could effectively never end up recognizing locations properly or recognizing them well enough to be able to create a map like that. So I really didn't know that it would work at the start, but in the end it did, and that is cool. But maybe you're wondering right now, how is the artificial intelligence actually able to recognize locations? There is a couple of things that I noticed. The first way which I noticed that an AI can understand locations is by using directional words. Yeah, so some, for example saying, I'm at Nagoya, or in Nagoya, I'm near Mount Fuji, I'm in front of uh, the sushi restaurant. The AI recognizes when a, a directional word like that is used. And that brings us to the next type of word on how the AI is able to recognize locations, and that is um, location modifier words. Yeah! Something like prefecture, lake, mount. Yeah, lake Biwa, Mount Fuji, Cape Soya. The AI is able to take these location modifier words, and then they usually know that combining them with the word that comes afterwards, that is a location. Usually. I mean, yeah. Lake Motosi, for example. And that's a pretty damn cool thing. Um, and, the, and the very last way in which it is able to recognize locations is actually by remembering them. The thing is, you don't really want AIs to be able to remember things, you want them to be able to generalize things and make educated guesses, but um, if certain points of data, certain words, are mentioned often enough, the AI will then typically realize that that thing is a location. For example, country names like Japan and South Korea, the Philippines, Tokyo, Nagoya, Osaka, these things, because they appear often, the AI eventually is able to remember them. And then it'll automatically know that that word, uh, noun, is used as a, is used as a location. Let's take a look at how it performed. For example, for currently Hannah, she is a travel influencer. She went to a ton of places, like here, Sequoia National Park. The AI was able to recognize that because park is a modifier word. Um, Death Valley, Valley, another location modifier word, and it seems to be exactly the right place. Um, Las Vegas, no way, it nailed Las Vegas. And of course, everything in Japan, the Philippines, like we said, Halong Bay. Holy hell, it works so well. For travel YouTubers, this thing is just works beautifully. Like, it works exactly as I intended it. 
exactly as I intended. Ia Valley here. Mount Ijitsuji, I, I can't pronounce that. Um, Kyushu, well, yeah. Fukui, Mount Ibuki, and so forth. Okay, take me anywhere somehow ended up being a location. Whatever. It just works. It's so great. It's so great. All right, travel influencers work really well. I want to give like this amazing example here. Kyushu Trail, like I said before. Like everything is in Kyushu. Like everything is in Kyushu. Kyushu, all of his videos. It's got Itoshima. It's got Kyushu itself. Miyajidaka Shrine. Sasaguri. And it, it's all in Kyushu because the guy lives in Fukuoka. All right. And I think just that's just so cool. It accurately is able to map everyone's adventures. This is so cool. On contrast to Kyushu Trail, there is Go North Japan. Go. There you go. Go North Japan. Everything is in the north of Japan! Everything! Look at how cool! Aomori, Hanamaka, Yama, 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 Yamagata, Rikuzun Takata, Sanrika Coast. It's just it's just cool how, how basically the, the entire channel name is basically reflected on that map. That is just, yeah, I love that. So cool. Uh, yeah, travel, hiking channels, it works really well for. Let's go for a channel that isn't a travel channel, or let's just say, different kind of channel, Rambalak. Oh, that's a lot of markers. That is a lot of markers. Look at that. Oh my god. So what's going on? Sec. Bam, bam, bam. It looks like Olivara Castle, Tokyo Shibuya, Jiugagaka Station, Shinarayasa, Shiroishi. Bam, bam, boom, bam, bam. Everything just works. Wow. Yeah, so why does it work? Basically, Rambalak is a kind of walking around channel. He doesn't talk at all. But what he does do is, he does exactly what you should do if you want this to, thing to work well for you, is to just write down where you were in the description, in the video de description. Um, if you do that and just write down in natural English, hey, I was here at uh, Yanaka, then the AI will be able to pick that up really, really easily. So go and do that. This is like a really great example on how to uh, do it right. Just write in the description where you were. Uh, well done, Rambalak. You, you, this map just works beautifully for you. Look at how he, this guy went everywhere on so many videos. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right. All in all, I'm really, really glad that this map ended up working so well. I mean, one year ago I started a project, not knowing how well it would work, and... The camera is tilted. Not knowing how well it would end up working, and it did. And that's an amazing feeling. Of course, it didn't work perfectly for everyone, but overall the system works well for those it's designed for. And... I'm so freaking happy about that. This thing was massive. It, it took me such a long time to build. I, I, I work full time. I didn't have much time to do this, but each time I was able to sit down, I was able to do a little bit. And then the next day, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And eventually, at some point, I was able to finish this. I will be building and appending to this thing in the future. And I will be looking at doing more projects. All I want to say is thank you for watching. First of all, subscribe to the channel and also then check out my choose your own adventure. Yeah, I made a choose your own adventure video. Day in my life, but you choose what happens using YouTube end screens, like the ones that just popped up. You can check out that Choose Your Own Adventure, it's really freaking great and you'll love it. For the people who have not so much patience but want to learn a lot about Japan, a hundred things to do in Japan, but in one minute! That's nuts! You should go and check it out, and subscribe. Guys, I'm looking forward to more epic things in the future. Until then, sayonara bitches. Rawr.